Alleluia, Christ is risen. Welcome on this Easter Sunday to my chapel here in the Bishop's Palace in Exeter. There's something really profound about proclaiming the victory of Christ, uh, particularly at this difficult time in the life of our nation when so many people are sick and some of them dangerously so. Normally on an Easter day I'd be listening to the choir rehearsing for the Cathedral Eucharist and outside the cathedral bells would be ringing, summoning us to worship. But today those bells are silent and the cathedral is closed, as are churches and cathedrals right across England. The bells that you've been hearing are in fact a recording, as indeed are the hymns that we're going to hear later on. But that's no reason why at home you shouldn't join in as best as you can. Because there's something, there's something defiant about singing at this time and proclaiming the love of God which we see in Jesus Christ. In many churches at Easter time across the world, Christians gather in worship and to mark the resurrection, a great paschal candle is blessed and lit, proclaiming his victory. And what happens is that the candle is marked with the, with the cross, the sign of Christ, and with the date, and with the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, the Alpha and the Omega, because Christ is our beginning and our destiny. And then five so-called nails are put into the candle, symbolic of the wounds of Christ. So as I do this, I invite you at home to pray with me, uh, thanking God for the gift of life, thanking God for the resurrection of Christ. Because as St Augustine says, we're an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. To him belong all times and ages. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Amen. The light of Christ Thanks be to God. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you've broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, 
For a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of Christ's resurrection, let's lay our lives before God, our, our hopes, our fears, our failings, our inadequacies, and let's pray for forgiveness and for grace to walk more faithfully in the way of his risen Son. Almighty God, through the resurrection of your Son, you've opened a new and living way into your presence. Free us from all sin and fear. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death on the cross, you've broken the power of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you are the indwelling life of God. Cleanse and sweeten the springs of our being. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And now Bishop Jackie is going to read us the account of the resurrection that we find in St John's Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. 
Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and she told them that he had said these things to her. One of the most powerful paintings of the crucifixion that I know is by Salvador Dali. In most paintings we find ourselves looking up at the face of Christ, but in Dali's painting we find ourselves looking down at the cross. The monumental figure of Christ towers above the world, yet we seem to look down on him as if we were viewing the crucifixion from God's perspective. Christ is immediately and massively present to us, and yet he's strangely distant, high above the clouds, his face hidden from us. The bottom of the picture, out of which the cross mysteriously emerges, suggests the landscape of the Sea of Galilee, complete with fishing boat and a fisherman standing on the shore. In fact, it's Lilligat, a fishing village in Catalonia in Spain, where Dali lived. The transcendence of Christ, whose sacrifice embraces the entire cosmos, is rooted in the ordinary situation of our lives and homes. The cross is not remote, somewhere else, but planted right here and now among us. The title of the painting is Christ of St John of the Cross, and it refers to a tiny pen and ink drawing by the Spanish mystic St John of the Cross, which inspired Dali. For John of the Cross, the crucified Christ speaks of the beauty and compassion of God, a figure of hope in his own dark night of the soul. As a nation, we're travelling through our own dark night of the soul in this pandemic. Friends and relatives are ill, others are self-isolating, our hospitals are full and our NHS staff are working every hour under the sun and sometimes at great risk to themselves. Meanwhile, our churches and cathedrals aren't open for prayer as we would all wish. And this Easter, we're unable to receive Holy Communion together. Uh, and that's painful for all of us. And yet, when we gaze 
on the cross we find, as the old hymn has it, written in shiny letters, God is love. For us too, the crucified and risen Lord is our hope. When we gaze on Christ, we find ourselves literally seeing our salvation and we behold the beauty and compassion of God. It's a beauty that humankind wanted to deface and destroy. And this disturbing truth is something we find really difficult to acknowledge because there's a destructive energy which runs right through the heart of each one of us and from which we need to be redeemed. But the truth of Easter is that it's beauty that has the last word, not destruction. And when we look round our county of Devon, we see so many examples of the beauty and compassion of God breaking into our lives and dispelling the darkness and the fears. We see it in the way communities, the length and breadth of the county, are coming together for those in need, ensuring those who are housebound are okay. Teams of volunteers are staffing our food banks Churches are organising phone to check on isolated neighbours. Ordinary people are doing extraordinary things. In the garden on that first Easter day, the risen Christ spoke to Mary Magdalene as she stood outside the empty tomb weeping and asked her why she was crying. Our risen Lord understands our fears, our anguishes, our tears. The risen Lord walks with us in this veil of tears to a brighter dawn. The Easter candle burns bright and strong. We can have hope because death has no dominion. Christ is risen. He is risen from the dead. And God will not let us be confounded. And now Bishop Nick is going to lead us in our prayers as we pray for our world at this time and remember all those who are in need. At the end of each petition, I will say the words, Lord of life and hope. And you might like to reply with the words, hear our prayer. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty and everlasting God, we meet with joy to worship you this Easter day. And our joy is this, that he who was crucified, dead and buried is now alive forevermore, our risen and reigning Lord. May his joy abide in our hearts and our lives proclaim his praise. Lord of life and hope, hear our prayer. Living Lord, on the day of your resurrection, you greeted your disciples with the words, peace be with you. We pray at this time for that peace which passes understanding and is your gift to us. Give peace in our hearts peace in our homes and peace in our society as we look to you, the Prince of Peace. Lord of life and hope, hear our prayer. A prayer for those who work in hospitals and for all engaged in medical research. Gracious God, grant skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick at home and in hospitals, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure to the COVID-19 virus. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be cared for and restored to health. Lord of life and hope, hear our prayer. And a prayer for us all. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, 
that we may rejoice in the hope of the Easter message, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord of life and hope, hear our prayer. And a moment of quiet together as we bring to God those people and those matters which are most on our hearts at the moment. And let us lay them before God as we join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, that sprung to my life this morrow. At Christ that once was slain, the best is three days. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this Easter and remain with you always. Alleluia! Christ is risen!